Hi, my name is Mike Dam, and this is the time I got catfished by my homeboy. <laughs> So the year is 2009, 2010. I don't even think Catfish was a thing yet. I don't think the show was out, the movie. Maybe it was, I don't know. Somebody look it up. The food was out. The food was out. Good one, Rome. All right, it's my story, shut up. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we're in Atlanta. I'm about 21, 22, and Dormtainment was Pretty popping at the at the point, you know. We had been on World Star a few times. We had hosted a show or two at Georgia State, uh, the school I was attending at the time. G State. I didn't even graduate, so I don't know if they did that or not. But that's the school I went to for a little bit. So if you're an entrepreneur or somebody on the rise, <laughs> you have a lot of potential, and with potential comes a lot of pussy and penis as I come to find out. So one day I'm at school, my homeboy, who is the star of this story, I ain't gonna say his name. You know what, fuck it. <laughs> Comes up to me at school and says, uh, hey Mike, you know, I would really like to work with you guys. I think I could help you guys do this and that and that. And I was like, okay, cool, sounds good. Let me talk to the guys and then see. So we all meet with him, tells us how he could help us or he, how he feels like he could help us grow. So everybody was like, all right, cool. We were pretty much on board. You know, we were growing, so we felt like any help could help at the time. So like three weeks had passed and we had been working with this guy and it was like one random night and I was about to go to bed. So right before I go to bed, I'm like, you know what? Let me put some words up. So I grabbed my phone, start tweeting. I look at some of the responses. One of them was this cute chick. So I was like, oh, snap. You know what I'm saying? Well, okay. well, I've never seen her before. So I click on her profile. And you know, just like the well-oiled machine I am, I slid in them DMs. So I was like, hey, what's up? How you doing? You know, uh, what, what you up to? So she was like, oh, nothing. I'm about to get in the shower. Want to see? <laughs> I want to see. I want to see. That's like asking Stevie Wonder if he want to see. I want to see. She was like, all right, send me your phone number. So I'm like, nah, bitch, I, I wasn't born yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Like, I done been in this internet game for a couple years now. I'm not gonna send you my number. Here's my email. <laughs> so she emails me a picture. So I go to, the, to my email and just by the email, I'm like, this don't seem too right. And then I open the picture up and I'm like, this, this ain't right. It was a porno picture. You don't try to, show me a porno picture. I hadn't seen them all. So I, I go back to my Twitter and I say, that was, a, that was a fake picture. She said, LOL, what do you mean it was fake? I said, girl, I've been watching porn since I was three. That's a fake picture. So she said, oh my God, so does that mean I'm not gonna get a picture too? So I said, hell oh. no. So about three nights later, I'm sitting with one of the guys from Dormtainment. They playing video games. I'm on my laptop. So I see that Skype sends me like people who are, are like in my contacts to request for a Skype. So Skype has said, hey, someone familiar in your, in your um, contacts, do you wanna add them to Skype? So I'm like, first I was like, hell, hell no. no, but then I was like, wait a minute, Skype is a video chat service. How are you gonna be catfishing on video chat? Interesting, right? So I was like, all right, bet. So I was like, I wanna see if this, who this person is, right? So I requested them on Skype. They accepted. I was like, whoa. So then one of the guys that was next to me, I told him, I was like, yo, I told him the whole story. And now she request, uh, accepted my request on Skype. So I'm like, damn, she bold. If she, if she fake, she bold, you know? This is the play I'm gonna run, right? So I said, I'm a Skyper. I'm gonna turn my camera off, I'm gonna turn my audio off. If she answer, I'm gonna see who it is. Some Bill Belichick shit, I know, I know, I don't know. <laughs> I Skype her. My camera's off, sound's off. It's ringing. I'm like, nah, she ain't gonna answer. Finally, said connecting. I was like, whoa. So then it connects and you hear like room noise. Room noise, room noise, room noise. Not that type of room noise, but 
you hear just a sound of a room. So I'm like, oh snap. So me and my boy, we looking at it and we waiting. And it's dark. So I'm like, oh my God, here we go. But then the darkness starts to move a little bit and you start to see like the shadow of the darkness open up. Like the camera was on someone's like chest. So then the, the it looks like it looked it look like a, a dad trying to film a football game, just a whole bunch of movement with the camera. <laughs> run, son, run! And he, he don't capture nothing. So then finally the camera starts moving up, and you see that it's a big white shirt. So I'm like, all right. And then I see a big chest. But it ain't a woman's chest, it's a man's big chest. So I'm like, oh, and one of the guys from Dormtainment that was with me sees it. That it's a man. Just, he just sees that it's a man. He don't even wait to see who it is. He runs and starts screaming, oh! So keep in mind, my thing's on mute and the camera's off. So I'm just watching this. I'm still there. As the camera moves up a little more, not only is it a nigga, it's my nigga. My nigga Come on now, dog. So at this point, I see him, I shut the computer down. I might've threw the laptop, I don't know. I'm in complete disarray, shock, awe. All the words you could think of to describe the frustration I was in, that was me. I started screaming like, yo, what the fuck? All the testosterone I had in me just came out. Everybody, everybody get the fuck out of here. Yeah, everybody get the fuck out of here. So Cam comes running out. Everybody starts running out their rooms at night. Like, and they're like, what, what, what's going on? They thought somebody robbed the place. I was like, y'all ain't gonna believe this shit. They're like, what, what? I'm like, this nigga tried to catfish me. Ha! Ah! <laughs> So everybody starts laughing. I'm like, no, it's just not funny, dog. It's just not funny, dog. What the fuck, dog? You know, I'm just, I'm just barking at this point. I'm not even saying real words. I'm just like, I'm heated. I'm the whole story. Yo, the girl from Twitter tried to get a picture from me. I told her no. Send me Bono, the sky, and the yeah, uh. And they're like, are you sure, Mike? Are you sure? I'm like, dog, what the fuck? Dog? So I'm getting mad at them now for asking me if I'm sure. Because I'm like, don't question me. I'm not just going to make some dumb shit up like this. I'm like, yes, I'm sure. So now they're asking me, like, like, describe it. Describe what, what did you see when he opened the, 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 the camera on? So I'm telling them, I'm like, bro, I saw a fucking white shirt, fucking yellow wall in the fucking background, red pillows. Man, I'm telling y'all niggas, like, I'm, I'm fucking mad. Like, the fact that these niggas even questioning me, I'm just like, y'all, like, let's ride out. We ride together. We die together. Bad boys for life. So in this moment now, guess who fucking texts me? Not the girl. It's only been like five minutes since this whole thing has happened. I haven't heard from this man in days. My phone gets a text, it's him. The text reads. You still got this text? No, I'm just, where I wrote this. No, I, I, I've had like six phones since then. <laughs> hey Mike, just wanted to check in with you about this event we got going on in school. Wanted to know if you were interested in DJing. And to me, this is how he's he's reading it. This is how he's saying it because he knows some shit is going on right now and he's trying to disguise it. So I'm I'm like about to say, nigga, if you don't get the fuck off my phone with this bullshit trying to catfish me talking about some event. But I was like, you know what? I play it cool. So I said, okay, just let me know the details. <laughs> so then he texts me back and says, Okay, uh, maybe we can hop on FaceTime and smooth and, and, and talk about it further. So I'm like, why? But okay, FaceTime me. Skype. My bad. Skype me. We're in 2009. Keep in mind, this man has never Skyped me before. I still haven't given him my Skype. He Skypes me from his account, not the girl's account. From his account, the Skype pops up. Now. I told all the guys what was in his, what, what, what he had on and his background. All the guys are surrounded around my laptop, like we on some secret mission, like we looking for Osama Bin Laden and some shit. Like this is some real shit, right? I answer, it's, it looks like it's just me and the camera. Connects, opens up. This nigga didn't even have the audacity to move. The white shirt, the red pillows, the yellow wall, everything I said, he was in the same exact spot looking dumb as fuck. <laughs> and the guys were like, as soon as they saw that, they all started like, they, they just ran like, you know, like black people laughing how we all ran like that. They were, oh, 
car. They were trying to keep quiet, though, because they know the man was right there. So then I was like, yeah. I was like, you know, trying to keep it together. He's like, yeah, uh, so, so I was, uh, he was like talking like that. I'm like, the gig is up, bro. I know what you did. <laughs> He's like, Mike, Mike, what are you talking about? I was like, oh, shut that shit up, man. I was like, I'm going to tell everybody what the fuck you did. And he's like, dog, what are you talking about, dog? What are you talking about? And I hung up. So as soon as I hang up the Skype, starts calling my phone. What? Mike, what are you talking about, man? I wouldn't do something like that to you. I'm like, do something like what? He's like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ask for no picture. I wouldn't, I wouldn't try to. I was like, I didn't tell you all that, nigga. <laughs> he just starts digging himself in a, in a hole, like pretty much exposing that it was him, even though I already knew it was him. So as he's telling me this stuff, I'm just getting mad and like, done with, bro. Let me put the word out. You done in these streets. Like, don't come around no more. I don't even know how you gonna come back to the school. Like, everything. So he's like, oh, oh. So he starts threatening me now with all this dumb shit. So I, I start calling like three pe close people who knew us, who knew me, and knew him. You don't even believe what this nigga did. So I tell him, call somebody else. Yo, you ain't gonna believe what this nigga did. Tell him, call somebody else. Yo, you ain't gonna believe what this nigga did. And then I was about to call someone else. And I was like, Man, I don't feel like calling this many people. Like, I just don't, I don't think it's necessarily worth it. I just, I, I just started feeling like, I just want to get over this. I felt scared. Like, someone who was, someone who was close to me, someone who was in my house, someone who I trusted, I guess, in a way, even though he wasn't like a close friend, like, like the boys are to me, but he was still someone who we started bringing around and that I didn't think was capable of this and was just doing this. If I was Monte Teo, he would have had him a new boyfriend. Throughout these next couple weeks, it's just been, it's, it's just a lot of back and forth with me, with us and this guy. Cause now the group's involved and the group believes me obviously. So they're like trying to like avoid him, but then he's calling them trying to get, trying to like explain himself to them. And they're just like, like, bro, you done. Eventually, you know, after a few calls and after a few uh, <laughs> uh, funny threats. <laughs> You're nowhere near my caliber brief, bump. I don't even think I saw him anymore that day, after that day. I think he, I think he left the school like permanently and we didn't hear from him. Um, and around this time I was DJing. So I was not only DJing at the clubs and at parties, but I was DJing a lot at different schools. So one, this one particular time I was asked to co go to this school in the West of Georgia. One of the guys rolls with me. I think it was Chaz. Chaz says, uh, Hey bro, you heard to this school? And I was like, Oh my God. I was like, this, this dude better not come nowhere near where we do what we doing. Right. And I'm about an hour and a half in. So I start playing all the group dances. You know, everybody already on the dance floor. I start playing the electric slide, the Cupid shuffle, all that dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? And you know, in the Cupid shuffle, when everybody starts shifting, when the line shift and you got, you can start seeing the people from the back kind of move like, like, like in a Rubik's cube. I start seeing people shift. I just see this big ass white shirt. This nigga. Bro, get out of here, dog. Get out of here, dog. Not saying you can't be at this school, but you know I'm DJing. Stop it, man. Stop it, bro. Save yourself from the embarrassment. Leave me alone, dog. Leave me alone, man. So what's the moral of the story? The moral of the story? Nigga, I don't know, man. Shit. Hey, man, um, send your email. Don't send your phone number. <laughs> That's one of the morals. Uh, yeah, stay ten toes down, cause shit, niggas is out here trying to get your dick pics. Your dick pics. Stay ten toes down, cause niggas is trying to get your dick pics. That's the moral of the story. And obviously, chicks is trying to get your booty holes too. Man, my story's just. What the fuck's going on, man?